Hi, I'm John, and I'd like to talk today about taming timing complexity. Uh, we have recently taken free RTOS and put it together with Atmel Studio to allow our customers to take control over time. Time is a resource that needs to be partitioned just like any other part of an embedded application. We see more and more challenges to get our projects to be finished on time. We have more and more software content in our devices. They have less and less time to get them into the marketplace because they're competitive. And more often than not, projects change. We begin them, we start making an effort, and something comes along. Those changes might include adding a new feature that we didn't consider at the time. Our competitors get to market before us. We ran out of processing capabilities. We needed to change uh, chips. We needed to change compiler to get something to fit. I mean, something happens. And as those changes happen, you often regret how you might have decomposed the problem earlier. So we'll talk about partitioning here in a moment. The obvious thing of partitioning, you might want to partition the application by functional a diagram. I want my communications to be in one stack, and I want my user interface to be in another. They're fairly naturally set apart. Well, the resource we're talking about partitioning today is time. You don't have the time to do both at the same time, so which one is more important? When we uh, look at that, I, I can't help but think of a wonderful expression that, uh, that uh, Albert Einstein said. You know, the only reason we have time at all is so that everything doesn't happen at once. And uh, I mean, this is precisely the point. If you really want to work on latency and performance issues, you have to find some way to coordinate the tasks. And by doing that, you're in a position to allow to, your application to scale and your application to really embrace these changes as they come in without a complete refactoring or rewrite. So as we look at the timing complexity, as I said, you have into situations where you might have three or four disparate activities that you need to coordinate. I mean, you might have uh, uh, logging going on with signal conditioning, a communication stack that's wireless, a touch screen, some visuals going out. All of these things have different asynchronous events going. So what is an RTOS? RTOSs are not about making applications fast. They're about making applications predictable. They're about allowing an application to execute deterministically and allows really for a higher quality user experience. It sits between the application and the lower level devices. We have uh, drivers we'd like to share, most often the serial devices. We also have the underlying hardware itself. An RTOS allows applications to share resources without getting in each other's way. So I've already mentioned a predictable, consistent response when you use a real-time operating system. It improves the CPU utilization. It allows for the uh, better uh, latency and uh, uh, better performance. But really interestingly, it also allows you for lower power consumption. And a lot of people think that's counterintuitive. But in fact, it's one of the really great uh, virtues of real-time operating systems is you can manage the sleep state. You can manage when you come out. You can really determine what sorts of application requirements would take place within any given quantum of when the application's running. RTOSs are not new to this industry. In fact, over 70% of the embedded space use real-time operating systems, perhaps less so in the microcontroller space, but we're seeing that adoption really pick up as software and complexity is added. We used free RTOS because it's one of the most popular RTOSs that we have available uh, in the industry today. In fact, we saw 100,000 downloads last year alone. It's free, which of course is very nice, but the integration with the tools is what really allows free RTOS to be successful. ASF's implementation is uh, quite straightforward. We've taken the device drivers you'd like to share. We've added the thread safety to them. We have introduced the services required to allow us to coordinate the activities within the application. And all of those allow the uh, shared resources of DMA, TWI, uh, USART, the USB device. And that coordination is really what's key. And it's that integration that saved our customers time. To gain access to that application, we use the free, uh, the, the ASF wizard, this traditional component configuration technique. We select ASF, we add it to our project. Once in a project, we can go in and uh, customize and tune those particular, uh, those particular configuration items. In addition to that, we have the ability to do um, uh, the analysis of what the execution when it's running. We can see what threads are executing. It's a free gallery plugin. Go down, find out what threads are waiting on what services, and so forth. That a, a, a visualizes that black box and allows our developers to be successful. Finally, we have examples. ASF has got a low power example, a USB example, a TCP IP example. And those examples are there to allow you to get the, get, uh, hit, hit the ground running and, uh, and allow your application to succeed. So I invite you to try ASF and free RTOS. It's uh, there as a service uh, within our gallery, and it can often help you tame that timing complexity. Thanks.